Mike Dart is a Cherokee National Treasure for basket weaving. Over the years, Mike has learned that keeping a peaceful mind and intentions lead to tremendous works of art. I was taught that as an artist who works with materials from the land, that we are supposed to take care of the land and we are supposed to leave the land better than the way it was when we arrived. I come out here to meditate and you know, just to think a lot. And whenever I am starting to, uh, to prepare and stuff, I do uh, certain things at the water, you know, that I was taught to do. I'll come down to the water and I, I'll just wash my face, I'll wash my hands. Kind of like, you know, any kind of bad feelings that I have is the water's taken away. You know, that's uh, just what I envision in my mind. I just like to be in a good place whenever I'm working in nature. And if I'm gonna take something from the earth, I wanna make sure that everything's good that I leave there. My name is Mike Dart. I am a Cherokee National Treasurer for Basketry. I received the award in 2017. I grew up, I was actually born in Salem Springs, Arkansas. Lived there until I was 11. Then my family moved to Ader County, which is where my Cherokee family is from. This wasn't really a whole lot to do here. And so that's why, you know, we come to the creek and, you know, find things to do outside because, you know, we didn't have a lot of stuff that the kids had in the city, you know, to do. So we just kind of made our own fun, you know, outdoors. I'm kind of an introvert. You know, I really enjoy being alone. <laughs> Where it's quiet is where I'm the most happy. <laughs> I like going to museums. <laughs> and I know people's not gonna think that's very interesting, but I can get lost in a painting and I can sit there for an hour. I always wonder what the weavers are thinking whenever they were making their baskets. My mind just kind of goes like, I'll be way off in Taiwan or somewhere. <laughs> I don't even realize what it is sometimes. I can look at any basket I've ever made and I can tell you what I was thinking and what I was feeling at the point in each basket. You can tell whether I'm in balance or not by my work. My style is definitely contemporary, and I go for contemporary, in, especially in my uh, roundery double wall baskets. I want to make it appealing, you know, to a younger generation if they see these colors and they think, oh, that's really cool, you know. So I definitely want something to catch somebody's eye because my basket might be similar to somebody else's, but the color, you know, it can catch somebody's eye, and that's what um, a lot of people tell me. They say that they can walk into a gallery and they can tell it's my work just by the way it looks and that's what I go for you know I want it to be Cherokee but I want it to be recognized as mine. I always encourage my students to come into their own and to develop their own style you know figure out something that you can do to make this yours. Mike's been a great mentor he's always been great for encouraging you to create and do on your own too not just to you know, copy what he shows you, but to utilize different materials and different colors. My favorite natural material is definitely honeysuckle. You need probably about a pound of whatever material you're using for a honeysuckle or a round reed basket to make a finished basket, you know, to where I'm satisfied with it. That right here, uh, we get what's uh, growing along the ground, that's the root where it's like started to take root. And some people cut that off, but I weave with that. To me, it gives it character. If stuff like that's kind of sticking out and collectors can tell it's a you know, natural material. As far as dye goes, they call it walnut, but here we call it butternut. But it's related to the walnut, but it's a little bit different. They would use the walnut hull itself, but also a part of the root. Well, this is a natural color. This is what it would look like, you know, without dyeing it. Like I said, I'll leave those little roots. And, and this one right here is a traditional color. 
that's done with uh, black walnut holes and also part of the root that I boil. You can get these whenever they're all green, when they're fresh or whatever, it'll still work. I like to get the ones that are already starting to turn black because that black, like, that's what the dye comes from out of the holes. It doesn't matter if they're already half rotten or whatever, it'll still work. <laughs> I've really appreciated how he has integrated sourcing um, honeysuckle, using um, natural dyes, and how he always tries to tie in the natural elements to what we do, and how it would have been done in the past by our ancestors before removal. I was always interested, you know, in my Cherokee culture and my Cherokee background and heritage. Whenever I first started making baskets, in the after I made the first one, it was just like I felt a connection to all my ancestors and to, to our past. And I knew that basketry was something that had continued, you know, pretty much nonstop since the time of pre-contact. And it's one of the only art forms that we have that has continued in some way. It's evolved and it's changed over the years, but it's still continued. I think every Cherokee person needs to learn how to make a basket because like I said, it's a direct connection to our past. Right now, uh, basketry is flourishing, you know, in the Cherokee Nation, but I'm 43 years old. I'm one of the youngest people that's actively pursuing baskets, you know, making baskets as an art. Even though it's flourishing now, in another 10 or 20 years, it could be in danger if younger people don't take an interest. You know, I want be able to say that basketry has continued nonstop since pre-contact. I want them to be able to say that two generations from now. <laughs>